Guys, lately I've been doing some documentary style interviews, particularly using them in my music video behind the scenes. In this video, I'll be talking about two of the things that I've been using throughout this process in order to make these videos look and sound just a little bit better. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is audio, and then the second part of this video, we're gonna go into a little bit of lighting. Now, I'm not gonna say that audio is more important than video or vice versa. I do think that you need to prioritize both kind of equally, but just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna talk about audio first because I think that I can cover that just a little bit quicker than the lighting portion. And then at the end of the video, we'll go ahead and jump behind the computer, get on DaVinci Resolve, and actually go over how to do the technique that I'm gonna talk about for the audio part. Okay, so for audio, I think the most important piece when it comes to capturing the best auto that you can obviously is getting the microphone as close as you can to the subject without getting the, you know, obviously the microphone in frame. It doesn't matter how much you spend on the microphone, whether you spend $800, $1,000 or whether you spend, you know, $200 on the microphone. If that $1,000 microphone is too far away from the subject's mouth, obviously the audio is not going to sound great. So the best trick that I've been implementing into this whole workflow when it comes to capturing the best audio is I've been actually putting the shotgun mic in the frame and then taking it out in post. So for those of you that are kind of not new to filmmaking, if you've been filmmaking for, you know, a year or two, you can probably figure out, you know, how I did this. So I'm not going to necessarily go over how to do this right now. But for those of you that are kind of new to filmmaking or new to masking or masking is kind of a new, um, a new technique that you haven't really mastered yet. I'll go over specifically how to do that after the lighting portion. The best way that I'm going to recommend you guys start out doing is just to utilize the three point lighting. Three point lighting just consists of a key light, a hair light or a backlight. This hair light can also be used used as a fill light and then the last light I'm going to talk about is backlighting. Okay so the first light we talked about is the key light. I think the best way to do a key light is just position it just over your subject's head and then just aim it down onto your subject's face. Using this positioning just seems more natural because that's kind of where the sun is located too whenever you see people walking around and when you talk to people outside. I do recommend that you use a softbox and not just like a light fixture like a regular light fixture that you would find like at Home Depot or at Lowe's. A softbox does exactly what it says. It makes the light softer. Now you can pick up one of these soft boxes from either Amazon or eBay and they're really budget friendly. I do think that this particular one is by a company called Newer. I'll post that exact item down in the description below. Okay, now the second light that we talked about was either a hair light or a fill light. A fill light can be used to kind of fill in the shadow that's caused by the key light being set at a 45 degree angle. But in this scene particularly, I used a hair light. Now this hair light is by the same company called New, where I do think it was like a $30 it's like LED panel light. I'll zoom out here so y'all can see exactly what it looks like. It's this light right here that's off to my rear right. And all this light is doing is basically just outlining this side of my face that's on the opposite side of the key light. So this is what it looks like when I turn it off. And this is what it looks like when it's back on. So you do see that it, it provides that rim effect, that kind of halo-y effect or whatever you want to call it. It's basically outlining uh, the left side of my face here. Now, last but not least, we're going to talk about the backlight. So the most important reason why you want a backlight is to mainly separate the subject from your background. In this particular shot, I have a YN360, which is a wand style LED and RGB light. It runs for about $80 on Amazon and eBay. I'll link that in the description below as well. Now I will say if you don't, if you don't have this light, man, pick it up like today, just go get it. I use this light all the time like literally on every single set i use this light it's really easy to set up you can run it on your bluetooth straight off your phone it starts at i believe 3800 and it goes all the way up to 5600 uh, daylight and then it does the entire color spectrum it's really easy to use it utilizes the sony mpf batteries which is basically what's powering everything that i have anyway you can set it to flash you can have it like grade from green to blue you can basically do whatever you want within the app the color temperature and cri are really good for video so like i said man if you guys do not have this yn360 go pick it up in this particular setup as you can see i just have it kind of angled at a 45 degree angle towards the wall behind me so that it's kind of illuminating that whole back area with blue and also keep in mind i didn't just like choose blue. I chose that because I'm wearing red. Red and blue are contrast colors. This, the color of my skin is relatively, you know, orange. So not only is it providing depth in terms of like it's actually further away from me and the lens, but it's also providing this scene with that color contrast as well.
Okay, so last but not least, we're going to hop on to Resolve and we're going to figure out this whole masking thing. But if you guys, like I said, if you guys have been filmmaking for a while, I'm pretty sure you can figure this out. If you have any questions on any of the equipment we talked about or went over, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at SCG Filmmakers and I do appreciate you guys stopping by. But like I said, for the rest of you guys that are kind of new to filmmaking, let's hop on to Resolve and figure out how to do this whole masking thing. Okay, so I've just fired up DaVinci Resolve and if it's your first time using DaVinci Resolve or you're new to it, um, welcome. <laughs> um, this is a pretty, this is a pretty intuitive program. And now I'm coming from uh, Premiere Pro, so I have not used Final Cut or any other a Avid or whatever the other ones call. I have not used Sony Vegas or any other editing software. So you know, I'm coming straight from Premiere Pro. Now, comparing Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve, I mean, it's leaps and bounds better, man. I like now as a Premiere Pro user. Uh, switching over to DaVinci Resolve, first of all, was a very seamless experience. Uh, it took me about a week to actually get comfortable with it to where like my workflow was relatively the same uh, time frame between starting my project and then, you know, rendering out my actual final product. But like I said, man, if you're new to DaVinci Resolve, welcome. I do think that you'll enjoy the experience. And as you can see, here are all those files right here over in my media pool. Now, right here, if you notice at the bottom, I'm in my edit tab, um, the way Premiere, see, I'm so used to using Premiere, man, I'll say it's Premiere. Uh, the way Resolve works is basically everything that was on the top in Premiere Pro is on basically the bottom on Resolve. So that's a pretty, something that's relatively easy to get used to. Um, but for now, we're just gonna stick to the editing tab and then the color tab. So we're gonna be switching out between the editing tab, which is the third tab uh, from the left on the bottom. And then we're gonna skip over this Fusion one and then be shifting over into the color one and then back over into the edit. And you guys will see, man, we'll, we'll go back and forth between these two tabs. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag over my sterile footage right here. So this is basically the footage that does not have any of, basically doesn't have me or the microphone in the shot. Now, what I kind of forgot to put out um, to you guys before I hopped over into DaVinci, the only way this is gonna work, first of all, if, if you have to be on a tripod, there's really no other way to do it. Um, and then secondly, that tripod cannot move at all. If that tripod moves, this will not work. So yeah, just make sure you don't move the tripod and make sure that the lighting is exactly the way it was um, before you, you know, come over into DaVinci and you're gonna have some issues. Also, before we get started, um, make sure that you guys film this sterile shot here without the microphone. I've done it one time to where, you know, I was like, okay, I need to film my sterile shot. And, you know, I hit record, I got out of the frame. And then you know I didn't move the microphone out of the way, so it kind of defeated the whole purpose. But yeah, just make sure you move the microphone out of the frame, and then obviously you need to be out of the frame as well. And actually, you don't really need to be out of the frame, but you just kind of want to make sure that you're covering all your bases. So yeah, just make sure you're out of the frame. And so here goes my sterile shot right here. All I'm, all I'm gonna do is click on it twice so that it comes over into here. And I don't need the audio for this particular file. I'm just gonna drag over the video file here, which is on the left. And we're gonna drag it down into video two, actually. So yeah, we'll go ahead, put that in video two. And then just for this example, I'll drag over one of these clips where I am in the frame as well. Put that over into video one. All right, now we're gonna go click on this video two clip right here on the top. We're gonna drag the opacity down to about, uh, about 50 percent is anywhere where you can see you know yourself or your subject in the frame as well as the microphone simultaneously okay so now we're going to go into the color tab in the color tab you're going to see that the way the color tab works in davinci is they work in nodes unlike premiere pro where they kind of work in layers within the same editing tab this is a whole nother different tab so just i guess you could consider these nodes here like layers it just works linearly and not um vertically so within the node window right here, just make sure that the actual node is clicked on and you'll see that depicted by an orange outline around the node. And then we're gonna immediately hop over into our power window tab right here on the middle portion on the bottom. Now here we have our curves, you know, we have our qualifiers, which is that we're not gonna work with any of this stuff here. We're just gonna be working with our power window or it's just called window, our windows tab right here. All we're gonna do here in this window is we're gonna click on our pen tool. This will enable us to draw our mask manually. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna simply mask out this microphone here. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so as we can see, the, the microphone is now masked out. I will say try and get this mask um, as close to the microphone as possible because just in case you you know move over or your subject moves over, you definitely don't want this mask like too far over, you know, close to you. You don't you don't want it anywhere near you. 
you want to give yourself some leeway so that just in case you do move, you know, the mask doesn't um, reveal itself. So there we go. We have our mask set and ready to go. Now, all we need to do is go over into the clip side, right click it, and we're going to find something that's called add alpha output. Go ahead, click on that, and then go ahead and connect this blue square all the way to the ending point, uh, the blue ending point here. Now we can go back into our editing tab and drag the opacity up. And there we go. It is gone. Voila. Magic, right? It's, it's like magic. Software today is crazy, man. This is like unheard of 30 years ago. This is nuts. You'd have to go through some crazy stuff to do this. And now it's just like a couple clicks of a button. But as we can see here, you know, if I hide and reveal this um, clip that's on the top, you guys can definitely see that. Yeah, it's just completely gone. And like I said, man, um, just you just have to make sure that you remind yourself or your subject not to go anywhere near this microphone. And there's ways to fix that as well. Just in case you do have an accident, you could mask out and fix that as well. But just to make life more simple for you in post, just yeah, just make sure that you're not getting behind the microphone or you're not gesturing anywhere near the microphone. That's it for this video, guys. If you guys have any questions about anything you saw in this video, whether it be the actual editing part on uh, DaVinci Resolve or whether it's lighting or the microphone, what type of microphone I'm using, all that stuff will be linked down in the description below. But if you guys have any questions outside of that, don't hesitate to hit me up on Instagram at SCG Filmmakers. As always, if you guys got any value out of this video in particular, don't forget to check out some of the other content on this channel. And how about my fellow filmmakers out there, man? I'd like to hear from you guys. How are you guys improving your talking head slash uh, documentary style filmmaking? Have you guys been using any tricks up your sleeves? I might be able to use it as well. But until then, man, I'll see you guys in the next video.